My problem is that I started writing on Muslims, their issues, and people just started considering me as expert of Islam. So I am here as a learner, as a person who wants to know more about the issues which Ambassador Ambiankar has very beautifully illustrated and told us. So I am enriched by his talks, but I have few issues that I, since my job is also to chair the session, so I have to do a few jobs that I'm supposed to do. And these are as clarification, seeking clarification. <clears throat> no judgmental comments, but seeking clarifications. You know, uh, Ambassador Vyankar said in the beginning of his talk that this ISIS crisis uh, is a problem within Islam. To me, it's not a problem within Islam. It's maybe a problem within political Islam. And we have to make distinction between Islam and political Islam. If you look at the life of the Prophet and the, in the initial phase of Islam, at least till the four caliphates. And I would like to point out that I don't know if it is in the final, final draft, but whatever I have read in this draft is a mistake about the origin of the Shias, and he said that it's perhaps of their prophets. I would write, uh, the Shia admits of other prophets after Muhammad, and so far 12 have been accepted, although a larger number of interpreters of, is, interpreters of Islam have also been accepted. This is wrong, because the Shias never considered that there is a prophet. They considered Imam <coughs> Ali as the first Imam. There's a long history, but we, we don't need to go to do this. It will take a long time. But just after the death of the Prophet, the, the battle for the succession erupted. And there was little controversy. And some people, the supporters of Ali, Hazrat Ali, who was in the blood relation of Prophet Muhammad, they, they demanded, they thought that this succession should go into the family. That's why the al the, the the family of the Prophets, and the other group, which we are prominently in, uh, I mean, majority, they said no. I mean, there should be a kind of consensus. And the, the, the council decided that it should be Abu Bakr because he was very close to the prophet and he deserved to be the successor. That's why he became first caliph and Hazrat Ali became the fourth caliph. But the, the supporters of Shias, uh, Hazrat Ali, didn't accept it. And that's why it became the Shia, the Shia Ali, that's the partition of the Ali. And that's how the, the Shia uh, sect began. Now, here, uh, you know, Prophet Abhyankar has said that, uh, that let us deal with the problem with Islam briefly. Uh, if there was a problem within Islam, then the Prophet would not have convened or started a, uh, a, co a covenant called the Misake Medina, where the Jews had give, been given the equal rights. There is an instance in the life of the Prophet that once a Christian delegation came to meet him, and the, the Christian person, he wanted to offer prayer. And he said, I want to offer prayer. He said, OK, go ahead. This is my mosque. It's my Masjid Nabi, the Prophet's mosque. And he decided. The dilemma, the test is that today, you will see the placards on the different Muslim mosques in, in India, in Bombay also, where they will say that this group is not allowed. You know, the Wandis are not allowed, or, or Jamaatis are not allowed. This is the problem. The problem has begun much after the death of the Prophet. So this is the political issues, and it should be dealt with that. When you talked of the crisis of Iraq and uh, Syria, you mentioned two important cities and left out, within Iraq and left out the one major. That's the problem. You talked of. Najaf, you talked of Karbala, but you didn't talk of Baghdad. And uh, as ambassador, you must must have been traveling. You must have traveled a lot to Baghdad. Last year, I was in th these three cities. And as you mentioned, as I read in your book, uh, this uh, booklet also, I saw the crisis. You see, Karbala, which has the shrine of Imam Hassan. Najaf, which has the shrine of Hayat Ali, which, which are very important cities, especially for the Shias, and Baghdad, which is a center of Sunni Islam. Lot of 
you know, scholars of Islam are buried in Baghdad. Uh, Baghdad used to be a very po powerful center of Islam. Now, when I visited Iraq and I visited these cities, I saw difference. The difference was that you had lot of amenities and you had lot of other things to appreciate about Najaf and Karbala. You, it was kind of, you know, a vibrant city that seemed to me. Lot of life, lot of buzz, people going, chatting their restaurant, and everything was happening there. But when you enter Baghdad, the problem starts, and you see there is a city within, you know, under siege. Even the the most prominent Sufi scholar, Baghdadi, and uh, his shrine at the time of say it was two two o'clock. It, it was time of prayer. It was locked. So that the, this the, 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 that could explain that how much that the Sunnis are suppressed during this uh, the regime of Al Maliki. Why the, why the, you you talked about this the the, Sun, the Sunnis in who were in. I would sort of not say power, but at least, you know, yes, this man symbolized, uh, Saddam Hussein symbolized to be a man who belonged to Sunni faith, though a lot of Sunnis had a lot of problems with him. But when the Sunnis started feeling being, uh, you know, discriminated against, the, their sense of alienation came to them, and that's how more and more recruits you got within the Sunni Islam for the ISIS. So this problem was not sorted out. Then you talked of the, the implications here in India. And you rightly said that we have to address this challenge. The frustration and deprivation prevalent among the Muslims in composite society. And I, I see that India is a very composite society. Obviously, it's a very multicultural and plural society. And here we have to deal with the problem. The four Kalyan youths who went to join ISIS, they came from relatively better off families. Three were engineers, either engineers or engineering students. And visibly, they didn't seem to be, you know, either they were not educated in madrasas, they were given a very kind of secular education. Still, they got attracted and they went to join them. Now here, if you want to deal with this problem, the problem is not just the security agencies can deal with. It's a, it's a big socio-economic problem also. And unless and until we give them a sense of belonging to this country, and unless and until we end political and economic exclusion of the Muslims, we can't deal with this problem. We have on, uh, only four. We may have 4,000. 4, I don't know how many it can go. because. These, the, 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 the people who recruit for ISIS, they are looking for these weak points. That who are the youth who feel alienated? Why do they feel alienated? And they can offer. And they have been given jobs also. They, sorry, they have been given offer of money, a lot of other things. But here, we have to deal with problem, and we, we have to end this. And how do we end this? It's up to us to find out. Because in the last uh, Lok Sabha elections, we, we could see that the, the UP, which has the, so many Muslims, we didn't send a single Muslim in the Lok Sabha. Maharashtra doesn't have a single Muslim from in the Lok Sabha. Gujarat doesn't have a single Muslim in the Lok Sabha. Madhya Pradesh doesn't have a single Muslim in Lok Sabha. Rajasthan doesn't have, the story goes on. In Maharashtra, there's not a single Muslim, Muslim minister. These are not just for the tokenism. You can, we can say that the, the Congress regime didn't do much for the Muslims. And obviously, I'm, I agree that they played the bank, vote bank politics. But this political exclusion and this sense of, you know, a, a kind of uh, the victimhood which is building up, as I read Urdu newspapers and I read them very regularly, so I can understand, I can feel the, the kind of frustration which is which is growing, which is there in the Muslim community, is not good for either for our, our security, safety, or for the, uh, the peace in the world. And these people, those who thrive on this kind of frustration, will be very happy to have a section of Muslim youth 
feel alienated and out of the, the system and certainly they can exploit that. So I think as long as far as, as soon as we deal with this problem and solve it, it will be better for us. Thank you very much.